Dan, it looks like you got a case of the Mondays, buddy. Yeah, and it's and it's Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> but this, when we're recording this, let's be honest, it has rained all, all week, week long. long. You guys probably know. This I am mildewing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ben. I'm here with Dan. And we are at Life Fellowship Church in Cornelius, North Carolina. We started a series last week on apathy and apathy in marriage. And uh, we just thought, you know, apathy is one of those in- things that, that can creep in and creep up on you. And all of a sudden, one day you just stop caring or caring as much. And we just thought there's a lot of areas in life that apathy can overtake us. And so today we're going to be talking about apathy in work. And, you know, that little cheesy line I just <laughs> opened our, our, our episode with, you know, it's just one of those things that sometimes you just show up to work. Have you ever had those moments where you, you 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 ever show up to work and you sit down at your desk and you just stare at the wall for just a couple minutes like, oh. not me. I'm a servant of God. I'm a pastor. We don't have we don't have human experiences. A little we angel- are robots. We do work. No, all angels day long. come down and give us bread and water whenever we're apathetic. <laughs> Uh, yeah. full disclosure, I have. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and I think it's, it's part of the, the human experience is that, you know, I, I we obviously are going to be looking at a variety of topics, apathy mm. at church, apathy at home, apathy in a marriage, apathy, mm. you know, just with life in general mm-hmm. and, um, and then apathy at work. I think yeah. we have to be aware of it. Yeah. So, you know, this is. I think one of the things that obviously we want to do, we want to everything we do to be honoring and glorying, glorifying to God. Whatsoever you do, whether you eat or drink, do all of the glory of God. And so there's this idea that our work does matter to God, right? Yeah, I yeah. mean, I remember your favorite sermon series you ever preached was Ecclesiastes. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> in, in the fall of 2020, when yes. I was sick in bed for three months. By, by the way, he wasn't really sick. He was just apathetic. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of these, if you only knew three years ago, we had planned this series on Ecclesi, and I had to convince Dan, like, Dan, this Ecclesiastes He didn't convince is- me. He said, we're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is going to be such a great series. And so I was really looking forward to this, and I got sick probably right before. Yeah, you preached zero sermons. I preached zero sermons, and I, I and Dan had to preach the entire book. Of and yet, and yet, I have admitted God did some wonderful things he, in my life during he he was a good study. He did, but but Ecclesiastes talks about this idea that our work matters to God. It's one yeah. of those things that. That, that yeah, scripture was, says, whatever you put your hand to, do it with your might. Do it as yeah. unto the Lord. Yes. These are these are biblical principles. So I think it's it's I think there's a there's a misunderstanding that if you're in full time ministry, you're doing you know nonprofit work. They could see why you know you should get excited about work every single day. But work work is work, right? It, it it is, and 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 life is life. And whether you're talking about work or your marriage or church or whatever, we have to under understand we go through seasons. Absolutely. <clears throat> and there's always a season of renewal that mm-hmm. we can experience that that's your honeymoon period or that may be a a promotion or a new assignment mm-hmm. or you move to new facilities but it, you know you you get re-energized by by newness and and then there are there are seasons of intensity high growth a mm-hmm. lot of pressure i mm-hmm. like to think of those as the summer mm-hmm. um, then there are times that I, more apathetic for me is is the the fall season mm-hmm. where the Days get shorter, right? Mm-hmm. And and darkness comes earlier, mm-hmm. and and things that were once alive are showing their age. That's I think a dangerous time for many people in relationships, in in work, in even in church life, in in that you don't recognize it as a season. You think that this is a conclusion, mm. and and yet these cycles are a part of God's design in nature for renewal. Yeah, and it's it's part of of you know the way he has created things, and I think that are, that is true in 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 work and church and life and all these other things, and in work in particular, I, I think there's the the shorter seasons. There's also the broader seasons. Uh, a lot of people go through, particularly men, and mm. this isn't sexist; it's just anecdotal. But a lot of men in their forties, yes. uh, you're about halfway through your professional life, and you start looking at. Am I? Do I want to do this the rest of the time that mm-hmm. I have? And there may be these sensations. Well, it's not fresh anymore. It's not new anymore. I don't mm-hmm. feel challenged mm-hmm. anymore. I don't get excited at thinking about this. And that's often when men change careers yeah. or do something stupid as well. But yeah. but so we have to recognize that there are seasons. Yeah, I, I think that uh, 
I I was thinking about this when you when you brought up the whole midlife crisis thing. And I I do wonder. I'm not sure if there's ever been any studies on on women that work that go through similar things. I'm not sure. I'm not aware of any things. But obviously, I mean, there have been entire books written halftime. Mm-hmm. Some of the other things of because men do hit this wall. Usually, it's you know either late 30s to late 40s mm-hmm. within that decade. Most men hit something where it's like, am I going to do this for the rest of my life? Mm-hmm. And they, they, you know, because when you're 20, you have this, you know, this idealistic idea of the future of, of I'm going to change the world and I'm mm-hmm. going to make a lot of money or I'm going to make a huge impact in people's lives. And, and then in your 30s, you kind of, I call th- that decade the decade where God edits your life. Mm-hmm. He starts kind of taking away things that you would say, you know, when you're 20, you think you're good at everything, mm-hmm. or at least 10 things. And then when you're when you're 30, you realize I'm probably only good at like three or four things, mm-hmm. right? Because you through your experience, you learn the things you're good at and you're not good at. And then you hit your 40s, and you're kind of like, I don't know if I want to be good at these things. <laughs> yeah. These things don't matter. Um, yeah. But I think that there are. I think the stage of life is a major contributor to p- the potential of apathy. So just. For someone who might be in that age bracket, who's feeling emotions and going through this, what kind of advice would you give them right now? Yeah. Well, my first advice is don't make sudden changes. Mm. Um, it doesn't mean don't make changes. Mm. It's don't make thought well thought through um, changes that um, you know that are more impulse than 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 uh, predetermined or yeah. or logically considered. Mm. Um, <clears throat> You know, at, at at this stage, there are things happening to you physiologically in, mm. in the midlife. You know, mm. for men, tea levels start dropping at some point in their 30s. But Green tea or black tea? Yeah, wrong kind of tea. <laughs> <laughs> Testosterone. For those of you, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, 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 they start dropping. And, right. and that affects things like drive. It yes. affects things like energy mm-hmm. and passion. Mm-hmm. And, and so um, it is perfectly natural, but you right. do have to be to, to be aware of it. And, and you know, there's just a, a common truism that you don't make your best decisions when you're on top of the mountain, nor do you make them when you're in the lowest part of the valley. Right. Um, and so those are those are times when you exercise a bit of caution. Mm. At the same time, by the time you hit your 40s, you need to appreciate the fact that you are moving away from pioneer spirit into more of a sage mm. uh, perspective, which will increase for the rest of your of, of your life, your career, mm. where you have now gained enough experience that you are starting to produce wisdom. Mm. And the wisdom give, uh, comes from your your tenure, your perspective, your mistakes, your successes. And all of these are new tools for you um, that that you possibly didn't have earlier. Um, and you need to get them out and look at them and learn how to use them mm. and, and to assume a new role. You're no longer Superman or the boy wonder. Mm. You are now... Um, you got some gray around your temples. You've got you've got a more deliberative stance. Mm. Um, I, I even even with my children because you know we had two children and then a break and then two more. And um, the way I parented my second two was quite different than the way mm. I parented. I was far more aggressive with my first two than my second yeah. two. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we joke, yeah, because I was worn out from the first two. <laughs> but I also think, I, I do think there's less emotion and less, and, and, and some more experience. There's just wisdom. Yeah, yeah totally. That helps. Yeah, I think one of the things um, I notice about about going through through life and work and you hit that age is, I think you are less sure of things, mm-hmm. right? Like when you're twenties and thirties, I think. Oh, this is so true. I, I yeah. think you have this kind of like I I know everything about a hundred things really well, but then you as you get older in life, you're like mm, I'm not sure if I I'm not as I'm not as dogmatic about mm-hmm. all, all these things. Like even when I think about my theological, where I'm gonna I'm gonna die on this hill theologically. That that that. The number of things I'm willing to die for theologically have shrunk over time. Now, mm-hmm. now, what I would say is this: the things that I have convictions over that I'm not willing to change on have deepened. Yeah, does that, does that make sense? Totally. So, so I'm not willing to die for as much, but I'm also the things I am willing to die for. Man, I am. You're never going to change me on that right. because of where I'm at. And I think that if I think some apathy can come from this, this. You know, you don't self-reflect on the things you have learned, the things that you are, how you have grown. And and I think it's important when you're going through this 
stage of apathy, maybe it's the stage of life you're in that Dan's brought up. I think that there's also, to get out of that might be something to say, okay, God has taught me something. I'm not mm-hmm. the same person I was. What have I learned? What am I sure of? What What are the things that I can uh, honestly say, I know I'm good at this. I know I believe in this. I know I'm sure of I think I think that's a, to write those things down in, in in a way that so that you are sure, I think is really helpful. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think one of the things we have to make sure that we're doing is we're processing this these sensations that we're having mm. uh, correctly and and biblically, um, which will prevent us from making foolish decisions or impulsive decisions or and sometimes just plat- patently unbiblical right. decisions. Mm. You know, we need to say to yourself, what, ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? Mm. You know, this is very, very true in ministry. And let me just kind of pause here because that's obviously, you're in my ministry perspective. Right. But it, it could be that we have lost our sense of mission. We've lost yeah. the reason why we entered this in the first place. That's right. Um, there, there's a saying that someone shared with me 30 years ago, and I've, I've just kept it in front of me. Sometimes I write it down and look at it again, but it is this. There's nothing so spiritually deadening as constantly handling the outside of holy things. Mm-hmm. Um, this, this was the sin of Eli, uh, particularly, and his sons, right. Hophni and Phinehas, who grew up serving the Lord in the house, you know, in the, in the temple. Um, and in, in the end, they became overly familiar mm-hmm. And lost sight of the importance of what they were doing. Yeah. And because they were constantly handling the outside, they were going through the motion. Somebody had to set up for temple worship. Mm-hmm. Somebody had to make sure all the supplies were there. Yeah. And then the temple, and they were doing this, they lost sight of that. And you know, whether you're a, a student pastor or a senior pastor or a teaching pastor or a worship pastor, um, there's a lot of administration, there's a lot of preparation, there's a lot lot of mundanity. Is that a word? Mundane? But, but, We're, we just created one. Oh, yeah. Mundanity. Uh, yeah. That, that, <laughs> that happens in preparation for the actual exercise of ministry. Yeah. And meetings. Some, lots of meetings. Oh, lots of meetings and administration. Oh, man. If you could uh, look at Dan's, Dan's <laughs> face when I said <laughs> meetings, he said, oh, meetings. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, but that's the price you pay to be able to do the things that God right. has called you to do and that you that truly energize you spiritually. Yeah. But we, we have to make sure our focus is, is on, why did I get into this in the first place? Is mm. there any less of a call in my life? Mm-hmm. The, the other thing is, I think we need to be careful that we're not looking for an adrenaline hit, that we're not looking <laughs> for a thrill. Um, <laughs> and research shows that, particularly in ministry, again, because that's my context, but that your most effective years are after year 10. Mm. But most pastors leave after five. So they never get to their peak. Yeah. Why? Why is it? Why is it that the longer that you're at a place, you you're more effective, and particularly when you're dealing with people, because you know people, That's you know right. things, you've you've traveled this route before, right. and 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 so you may impulsively decide you want a new atmosphere, a new environment, or mm. a fresh challenge. We, you know, we're always very polite to ourselves when we want to get our own way. So I just need a fresh challenge. <laughs> well, no, maybe what you need is to double down on what you've been called to mm. do, get through this little tough period, yeah. and then God's got a whole new arena mm. that you are now prepared to do because you stuck it through. Yeah. Now, again, that's not to say that, you know, and I made big changes in my life in my 40s, um, but I will tell you that some of the big changes I made were made out of sheer exhaustion. Yeah. They were made out of frustration. Mm. Um, and and I was not in a particularly healthy place in any area of my life when I was making those. And I wonder sometimes if I, if, had I been healthier at that moment mm. and paid attention to the internals, some of the externals would have eventually impacted my eternals. So That's good. That, I think that's really important. I think what we're saying is, man, if you're if you're feeling a sense of apathy, you're just kind of showing up, you're going through the motions, sometimes it is good to take a step back and say, okay, what's really going on inside of me? Yeah. Kind of take inventory. You might need to even talk to someone about it. Don't I think the the biggest thing is don't if you're struggling, don't struggle alone. I think one of that's one of the most important things is bring people into your story, bring people into your emotions so that they might give you a perspective and a um 
maybe maybe teaching or wisdom that can help you through those times so that you don't you're not reacting you're not mm-hmm. responding you're not I'm not going out and buying a boat or buying a car or changing my hair color you know what I mean like mm-hmm. just the things that we do to be like I got to spice up my life and we go for these immediate fixes but it's not really going to make us feel better in the long run yeah you know what I mean yeah and it and it and that often is an opportunity for us it may be you maybe you need to go back to school and get another degree mm. maybe you need to read some fresh material you know there are two type of people there are type of people that move every five to six or seven years and for them moving um, is easier and more convenient for them and more exciting for them than remodeling their house or cleaning up the garage and all the debris that is collected and having a big garage yeah. sale um but but then there are people who say, you know what? Every so often, I'm going to have to replace the roof and do, redo the carpeting and repaint. Um, we need to have a garage sale and get rid of all the clutter and update our house. And then they've got 40 years of memories, 40 mm. years of life experiences. Their kids come back and they walk through the house and they talk about this and that and they yeah. show their kids. You know, so there's something there's something uh, moving beyond the apathy, moving beyond the desire for change or something fresh um, that, that allows you to establish yourself. And I think in, a, in our impulsive, uh, quick culture, we may be moving too rapidly at times because of apathy, because of fam- over-familiarity. Yeah. Uh, and we miss some of the blessings that come with it. And again, no two people are the same. Right. And God does not necessarily plan to everybody to stay in the same place. Oh, we understand that. Yeah. But make sure that your motivations are in the right in yeah. the right category. I, I think one of the things that uh, I, I think would help people, two things I think of, is sometimes you just need to do a personal reassessment of your life, mm-hmm. right? Like take strengths finder, you know, do, do, do the personality test because you've changed over time. And there might be new discoveries that you realize – Hey, I'm more wired this way, and eighty percent of my job is doing something that I'm not really good at. And I mm-hmm. think sometimes there is an important part of evaluation to say, "Okay, I know I'm gifted at X, Y, Z, but I'm doing A, B, and C. And man, I maybe it's not. I'm gonna I'm not gonna go in tomorrow and quit, but I'm gonna put myself on a on a trajectory to make sure that." I'm at a job where instead of doing 20% of the things I'm good at, I'm going to do 80%. And mm-hmm. when you do that, I think that gives life to you. When mm-hmm. you when you find a role in a, in a in a job that you are you know that you you're using your gifts, you're using your abilities, you're using your experience. I think there's something about that that, can, that brings life. And, and the second thing for me is I really think that there are times I mean this is true all the time, but there are times that you have to remind yourself of God is really your ultimate boss. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, you can fix your eyes on your earthly boss, things that are happening around you on a horizontal level. But at the end of the day, you're working for God. Like mm-hmm. he's the one that you're at the end of the day, whatever it is that you are doing, whether it's white collar, blue collar, ministry, non-ministry, um, whether you're working with people, working with numbers, working with things, you know, whatever it may be, you are. You say, you know, God, you are the one that I'm that I'm working for. Yeah. You're you're the one who's evaluating me. That I want my I want this work to honor you. I think those are two things that maybe bits of advice I would give to anyone else who's struggling with apathy. Absolutely, and, and I do believe this: the prayer factor and the wise counsel factor mm. are things that we really need to be be having part of our process. We we need to make sure that apathy is actually apathy. Mm. Because here, here's what can be – apathy is different than depression. Yeah. Apathy is different than restlessness. Mm. Apathy is different than consequences. Mm. Apathy is different than the fact that God is disciplining us because of our sin. Remember David was, oh, renew within my heart a clean spirit, yeah. oh God, yeah. and renew a right spirit within me. Yeah. Uh, Create me a clean heart, oh God, and yeah. renew a right spirit. Well, why was he writing that? Well, he was dealing with the consequences of yeah. his adultery and murder yeah. and all yeah. these other things. And and yeah, that is unsettling. And mm-hmm. that that uh, that's distracting. But if you don't go through the proper repentance and restoration, mm. and, and, and don't mistake that for apathy. Uh, and and or, nor is it simply depression. He had some things he needed to make right. He needed some confession. He needed some restoration. Yeah. So make sure. And sometimes somebody from the outside looking into your life can help you ascertain what are these feelings. That's are right. they generally just boredom or apathy, or are <laughs> they are they something deeper that That's you need good. to investigate? Yeah, I think th- those are some great reminders. I, I think that um, if you're sitting there and you're you're 
really wrestling and struggling with apathy, I think these are all great questions and ideas that you need to work through. Talk it over with your spouse. Talk it over with someone. Maybe it's your life life group leader. Maybe it's maybe it's a pastor, even Dan or I. But but there's things in your life when it comes to your work, you've lost that fire. You've lost that. You've lost that love and feeling, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Not even touching that. Not touching that. Um, but but I, I do believe this. That God wants us to enjoy our labor. He wants us to enjoy life. He wants us to um, enjoy the work. Even going, go, read the book of Ecclesiastes again. And one of the things that, that Solomon makes clear is God wants you to enjoy the labor that you do here on this earth. And so um, if you're sitting there and, and you're really wrestling with that, I encourage you to go back and, and have a conversation with someone. Think through the things in your life that you might be missing out on. And uh, we trust that God will guide and direct your steps to find fervency in your work once again. This has been a, a great conversation. Next time on Life Talks, we're going to be talking about apathy and spiritual disciplines. We're going to kind of turn it towards our spiritual life. And so I uh, hope that you will join us and look forward to sharing with you another episode here at Life Talks.